Hi, everyone. It's time for practice time with Ms. Rona. Uh, let me just get rid of this second camera. Just a sec here. Okay, my name is Rona May Arca, and I'm a registered music teacher in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. This is a series where you get to hang out with me while I practice. So hopefully you uh, get some practice tips uh, to try and um, some repertoire ideas as well. Uh, my students and, uh, and I tend to explore quite a wide range of repertoire. There's just so much interesting music out there. Okay, um, so I am, I just finished the sound check, that's why it was a little bit late. Um, what I think what I'm going to do though is everything's sounding okay. Yeah, at least through the headphones. So um, if you're tuning in and you notice that you know something's a little off sound wise, uh, please drop it down in the lab chat, and um, I'll uh, keep an eye on the side there and, and check. But uh, just for ease and to be able to hear the, the piano a little bit more clearly, I'm going to take the headphones off. So, And I'll give them to the turtle, which, as you can see, I've moved things around a little bit. But uh, yeah, the turtle's hiding over here. So he usually is the, the headphone holder. There we go. So just checking the levels. I mean, I've moved lots of stuff around just to make room for, for the tree. As you see here, we've got, um, I don't have an actual bonafide tree topper. So uh, Pikachu volunteered, and then uh, Squirtle, Charmander, and uh, Bulbasaur said, oh, we want to be part of, the, part of the fun too. So um, but I leave it out for my students to see if they spot them. All right, so doing something slightly different again, uh, although I'm going to start with warm-ups because warm-ups are good. Um, I've been doing video editing and uh, dealing with messages all morning, so uh, I think uh, I'm in definitely in need to do some warming up. So we'll start with some stretches first. So. Because I didn't do those this morning. So I'll work in the flexors and extensors. Oh gosh, my hands are so dry. How's everyone's hands doing these days between the frequent hand washing and the frequent hand sanitizing? I'm getting eczema. <laughs> I'm going to have to uh, do something there to, to fix that. Okay. Hmm, that'll need to be massaged a little bit later. So one thing that uh, my piano teacher friends and I have noticed, well, piano friends as well, because I have piano friends who don't teach, is uh, we, we tend to to carry our attention here in the flexors and extensors. Uh, eh, depending on the piece, sometimes the tri not so much the triceps and the biceps, but they do get used. Uh, a lot of the tension is neck and shoulders, so those we always have to work on. And then back as well, because you know, sitting and practicing for hours. We'll tend to do that, and we I think classical musicians especially forget that, you know, we can move, we can stretch. It's only once we start getting injured that we realize, oh, we have to take care of our bodies. And that's actually a good uh, practice to, to do these little stretch breaks, uh, you know, like a half hour or so, uh, like the Pomodoro technique. Uh, it's uh, breaking your, your work segments into half hour, 25 minute chunks, and then taking a break to, to reset the brain and you know, hydrate. So I'll pop a link down to the Pomodoro technique below. Uh, I find that when I do it, I wind up with very productive days. When I don't do it, not so productive. <laughs> okay, I think that'll be good for now. All right, so I'm going to move on with this um, this practice drill that my students and I 
were playing around with yesterday. So um, students are plugging along with their technical requirements. Uh, some are a little slow still, still trying to figure out the notes and fingering, but we have found that uh, playing around with uh, where we put the accents for some reason seems to work. So I'm just going to do uh, a camera switcheroo here. Oh, I lost my little thing there. I'm going to grab my handy dandy dice. So I can't remember. I think I got this container from a student. I think so. It's got like African seeds. So I ha I've had a couple of students go to Africa. So I realized it's a perfect container for the dice. And it looks pretty. Just trying to reach for 2d12s because we have 24 major and minor keys. And I'm going to roll to just put my keep myself on my toes. So 20. Okay. Um, I don't have my clock here. Hang on. I'll be back. I usually take my circle of fifths clock away when I'm recording or live streaming, you'll, you'll hear why in a sec. It's quite loud. So, Okay, so uh, 12 takes us to A minor. So, so I have to do F minor is what I rolled. Oh, good. Uh, I guess I will put this over here back on the wall. And you too can enjoy how loud that is. <laughs> okay, so F minor. Okay, I will run through a few different things here. So one thing that I struggled with growing up is when I did arpeggios, for instance, I would accent on triplets. I would do triplets. Even though the syllabus actually did say do them in groups of four, uh, but uh, my previous teachers back in the day, they, they actually didn't clearly demonstrate that um, difference of learning style. I think had I heard it and seen it, I would have caught on a bit more quickly, but it um, should be done in groups of four. So I've been getting my students to really accent the first note of each group. So. just to really work on you know, breaking that habit and sorting things out, uh, putting the accent on the second note of each group. So. And the third note of each group. So. Don't worry too much if you like slip on a note. Uh, finally, the fourth note of each group. my students did yesterday was they just played it normally after that so so I hope for those of you who are listening uh, compare the first time I ran through that to the to the last time uh, there should be two main differences so one it flowed more smoothly two it was faster so my students did that with arpeggios. They also did that with broken chords. So, ah, oh, hang on. So, and they also did that with scales. So, oh, I just gravitated to natural. Okay. Okay, I lost track. Let's try that again. I'm just gonna do two octaves. So. normally. 
I'll go back to four octaves though. So hopefully that gives uh, you uh, who are watching uh, a few different ideas for practicing technique. And you could hear the difference clearly. Uh, it's, I don't know how to explain it because I'm not a neuroscientist, uh, but I'm sure there is a very logical scientific explanation for why this works. Uh, I mean. The only thing I can think of is that in you're shifting your focus. A lot of times we fall into like autopilot. So uh, moving where the accent goes, playing the, the pattern a little bit differently forces us to stop and really pay attention. Um, so uh, perhaps that helps reinforce this that, that the paths created and give the synapses and all that. I don't know. If you are a neuroscientist and you're watching this, <laughs> please comment. Uh, shed some light on this. It's, it's, it's a rather interesting subject. OK. So uh, let me just consult with Turty, my turtle. Just want to make sure sound-wise we're still doing OK. I guess it would help if I actually said something. <laughs> there we go. OK. That's looking pretty good. Uh, levels look. Good, all right. Okay, so moving on. So going on with the, the theme that I had uh, in the previous month where I was practicing, you know, pieces in order from, you know, Baroque era up to modern. I'm going to change that up just a little bit for this month, just you know, just for fun. Uh, but I think also to help uh, help myself, as well as you who are watching, to, to start seeing patterns. So what I've done is I, I'm going to focus on two <laughs> extremes today. So I'm going to work on Baroque pieces, so various pieces that my students are working on. I'm going to leave my Ramon for a bit later. Uh, we'll take a practice break and then I'll do that. And I am overdue for putting up a practice clip on that, but later. Uh, now I've also done something a little bit different this time. I've grouped the composers by, I've grouped them by composer too, so era and composer. So hopefully uh, that makes it a little bit uh, interesting or uh, illuminating to just see certain patterns that each of the composers had it, and you know, being able to, to recognize and define their style a bit or you know music from that uh, region even because French Baroque is quite different from German Baroque which is quite different from Italian and Spanish Baroque. Anyhow, uh, so we're starting off with Baroque and then we're going to zip forward to uh, the modern era uh, checking out some gamer music and some anime music as well. Uh, jazz would have been the perfect pairing, but I don't have. Yeah, I have a couple of pieces I could have paired, but uh, right now uh, the the need for the for my students is to to go through these particular eras, especially because they both have their own challenges. So uh, Mozart, not Mozart. <laughs> okay. So the famous minuet in G major, uh, originally attributed to Johann Sebastian Bach uh, because it was in the uh, Anna Magdalena book. But uh, now it's uh, been, um, I it's commonly believed it's Christian Petzold who was the composer for this. So I'm just going to quickly run through this. Um, yeah, I suppose I should have like, grouped it with Bach, but now that most people believe it's Petzold, uh, I thought I'd just, you know, he's the outlier, I'll put him first. 
Okay, so my student's been plugging away at this. Uh, the main thing that he and I are going to have to start working on now that he's more comfortable with notes and fingering uh, are the ornaments. So I'm just going to run through it playing. Um, actually, I'm going to do a full run through with repeats because uh, normally this would have been done where we do the repeat and then we would ornament on the second round. So. <laughs> so used to not doing the repeats because on exams the kids do not do repeats. Okay, so now I'm going to go back and yeah, do the second time. <laughs> because I was concentrating more on the ornaments. Uh, so some editions will actually write them in, and some won't. Uh, the typical practice of the day was they didn't. They, you're just supposed to know you can ornament and choose between certain ornaments. Uh, my favorite's the mordant. So that first note written is D, and then I just went <coughs> wiggle down. I could have done a trill. Uh, the mm, this edition, has uh, lots of mordants, so I just stuck with mordants and appoggiatorials. Uh, okay, so now I'm gonna play around with this. So first time in the B section, I will do normally, and then I will play around with the ornaments. Uh, hopefully, I'll get in the right spot too. <laughs> be a sharp that's a misprint I mean I could break out another edition but I'm, yeah if memory serves correctly it is an F sharp in the other editions okay so repeating and adding ornaments um, maybe I'll try something a bit different this time I'll try trills so written note is B I'm just gonna go above and wiggle We'll see if I like that better. Yeah. Not too. See, I've been working on French Baroque for too long, throwing in ornaments everywhere. Um, I'm not going to put them everywhere, I think. It's a whole bar, so you could play with that. So this has four arms. Okay. So hopefully that gives a few ideas in terms of ornaments. There could be others. Uh, you could do a turn. So a turn, um, you could look that up. <laughs> Just Google term. Turn, like T-U-R-N. Uh, all right. So hopefully that gives my student a few ideas there. Uh, at least it gives them a sense of what a 
we're going to be working on this month. Make a piece. There. And got a couple of Telemann pieces next. So this is my student who's uh, working on her grade five exam and thanks to Conservatory of Canada. Uh, they have uh, these Flex E exams, so she's doing her exam next weekend via Zoom because it is still not safe to do in-person exams yet. But oh, rapid proceedings. Okay, so Taliban, uh, so born 1681, lived till 1767, was a contemporary of Johann Sebastian Bach. Uh, from what I remember of music history, the two of them often competed for the same job postings, and Telemann usually won. But the interesting thing is, you know, several hundred years later, who's more famous at the moment? Bach. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to quickly run through the aria here because uh, next week we're going to have like a super nitpicky class just fine-tuning everything or just tweaking before the exam. Um, so I am going to run through because I like her to work on putting a couple of little ornaments. I know she's been doing some, but I think we need to just really make sure that they're, they're locked in. So, quick run through for me to get, get it back under my fingers. Because I don't think I did the demo video for this. Well, I did it last year, I think, or the year before. I think I did it last year because her and her piano buddy started the piece the same day. So she's grade five. They usually say by grade five, do not do re repeats, uh, at least for the con can exams. So you, you will have to add the ornaments in the first time around. Um, so I'm going to just lock those in, maybe see if I can toss in an extra one. So. style, especially if this was played on a harpsichord, because this would die out immediately. That'll help sustain the tone a little bit longer. Ooh, I am so missing sharps. <laughs> gonna toss in an extra ornament oh maybe at the beginning of our seven so let's try a grace note this, or no um, trill try mordant here <laughs> maybe I 
I'm sounding too French now. chills is too much chills that's the question uh, one thing I have noticed um, as I'm exploring uh, Rameau's Les Sauvages uh, is that uh, the French were really free with you know ornamenting everywhere as the, Ger uh, the German pieces seem to be a little more uh, reserved maybe I need to listen to more 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 uh, German Baroque and French Baroque side by side and compare, but uh, at least that's been my experience. Yes. Next up is another another piece by Telemann. Uh, oh, things kind of got moved out of order. Yeah, not by much. Okay, so this next piece is also by Telemann, as I said. Uh, my student is working on polishing it, so she's finished learning it. Uh, but I don't think I need to do an absolute full run through. Actually, I might. I don't know. Um, since I'm playing around with ornaments with the with the pieces, that seems to be the theme. Then maybe I should just carry on. It's bourrées are fast and jumpy, so it's a bit harder to. I find to direct places. Cadences are great places because we're already kind of slowing and resting. Well, I think maybe what I'll do is I'll just do a quick run through and just play around with it. So then my student, she can listen to it and then we can explore next lesson uh, how she wants to toss in ornaments tastefully in the you know German Baroque style. Hmm, maybe I'll just do a small section. I don't know. I can't decide. Um, yeah, I think I'll just deal with the A section. With a faster Baroque piece, it's, ki it's kind of hard to be as really, I don't know, crazy with the ornaments. But could do a trill, or maybe just a mordant. pressure is dropping. I just felt a shift in my sinuses. There is a wonderful website. So if, 
to switch cameras for a sec here <laughs> while I explain this. Uh, there's a wonderful website. I'll drop the link below, but it's uh, www.yr.no. Uh, so it's a Norwegian website, but they what I really like about it is that it has, oh yeah, it is dropping. <laughs> it's going to do a steady drop starting in half an hour. And uh, anyone who suffers from uh, barometric pressure headaches will feel that change earlier. So uh, for me, it probably started another hour earlier, but I just noticed now. So Tylenol. Just drink sinus to the rescue, and then I shall be able to carry on. So this is not one of those things. I mean, there's some things that you can kind of push through, but sinus headache is definitely not one of them. Because it'll just get worse if you leave it. <laughs> All right. Sinus should be happy now least in a few minutes. Okay, back to Telemann, back to Guido. I don't know. I'm really torn about, because that could work. Um, now, I'm just going to grab my Ramon, if I can find that quickly. Um, Charlie Brown Christmas. Not too sure where he is. <laughs> I'm seeing all sorts of books except for the one that I'm looking for. Uh, that is the problem with the, for music teachers. We have so many books. I really don't know where it is. Then, uh, but I have lots of. <laughs> The held note is the first note, so I can do that. So I think this makes more sense. Then. Or I could do a trill. Ooh, it sounds very bird-like like that way. will feel better because as much as I like the sound of the trill yeah. it might be easier for me to execute <laughs> the mordant <laughs> student play around with those options and see what she likes better. Okay, so hopefully that uh, gives you uh, a sense of Telemann. So two very contrasting pieces. The aria is very, very lyrical and graceful, and this is very bouncy and somewhat disjunct. But um, yeah, there's a few ideas for ornamentation there. Yeah, oh, we are jumping. Okay. <laughs> T 
it's funny, um, my two senior students working on um, Bach for their grade nine and grade 10 respectively, they, well one, uh, the grade 10 student said that she pretty much had to force herself to learn a, a bar a day uh, to, to get to the bottom of the fugue. Uh, and my grade nine student who's working on her, on this piece, uh, said pretty much the same thing. She had to just like pick a bar and just plow through. Uh, there's just something about Bach that, uh, that definitely lends itself to that. I think because he has so much going on in his pieces. Uh, he just kind of went nuts with the counterpoint. Okay, so I'm, I've got the two different versions. So I've got the, my student's first uh, edition, which she's got in her Concan book, as well as the, the Henley uh, or text. So she, she's plowed through it and she's made it. Ash, uh, like achievement unlocked all the way up to 22, uh, downbeat of 23. So I said I was gonna deal with the presto because I haven't really done tons of work on the presto section, so so that I can check that off. <laughs> I will take a look and deal with it. Because um, she was asking if it's gonna be easier to learn, and I mean, from a glance to me, it looks like it's gonna be easier to learn. But I will read through it because I need to continue to stay a couple steps ahead. <laughs> temporarily in A minor. Oh, yeah, because the beginning of the presto chord, chord uh, the beginning of the presto section is an A minor triad, which is the subdominant of E minor, so it is a logical key to, to move to. Okay, um, I'm going to just start at the presto again, so bar 23, and I will try sight reading the rest.
kind of a major. against a B. That is just hideous. Are we in what, D major? D, I don't know. choose to pick our D. Okay. So, as I was, I don't know, half sight reading this, uh, I was trying my utmost to keep my eyes on the music. Um, that's one thing that was not stress to me growing up. Uh, well, it, it wasn't a wasn't. I mean, my teacher kept telling me to stop looking at my hands. <laughs> I kept saying that I needed to look at my hand so I could see what I was playing, and she said I didn't. So, it is a good practice of sight reading, though, which means you have to be able to feel your way around. So I'm not even looking down, or I kind of can see the keys from the peripheral. I found the group of three, so here's F, G, A, B, C. I know that my hands can do, yeah, they, they kind of lock onto an octave, and that's what a, a triad and reposition feels like, more like that. So yeah, learning to feel your way around the keyboard is a very handy skill. Okay, what, um, trying to figure out, so I'm going to compare and contrast this with my next student's piece. That's Ding dong. But let me just go through the beginning because you did not hear any ornaments whatsoever. And my student and I have been playing around with ornaments. Thank you. 
elements here. I could have, oh, hang on. Oh, just to simplify the, eh, go bigger, go home. It's actually written in the Urtext version. And what is that, R7? And it's also written in like that in the Concan version. Yeah, I don't think I would muck around with the ornaments. They, they're actually sparse in the Urtext version. The Concan version has a few more written in. Um, and definitely it is far less than what you would see in uh, French Baroque. Uh, I think with the, the mood in this piece, well, could do a few added ones, but the ultimate is definitely needing to feel that, that, that drive there. So if the trills are going to detract from that, then not a good idea. Okay, so grade 10 student. Oh, yes. So this one, I, I'd have to say, out of all my students' pieces, I think just because it's Bach, and, and because it's F-sharp major, I find uh, this is one I would not normally go to if I had got a choice of what to practice. Um, but that just means it really does need to be practiced. So I forced myself to put it on the list, but it's actually a really good combo with what's on here today. Uh, let's see, so we have... So my student and I have been listening to different uh, performances of this by you know, well-known and not so well-known uh, Baroque specialists and amateur musicians. So we've been both experimenting with how long do we make that trail? go further because there is um, hmm, that is definitely one interesting ornament in bar seven so I'm just actually just gonna have to go back here and it's nine o'clock okay not doing too badly got through the the hard stuff I'm trying to find my handy dandy cheat sheet in the back of the Concan book on ornaments. So this, yeah, the Urtext version has a, uh, it's just a good old trill, but it's got like the, that little maybe that. Excuse me, sorry. But then the other one is just, hang on. Okay, so that has one. Oh, you know what? Interesting. So, bar seven's written. Okay, 
Eso sobre... If I'm reading the concan chart right, that should be um, A sharp, G sharp, hang on, accordion, F sharp, and then back up. So let's just go super slow and we'll play with us. Okay, so the, the trill that I'm going to have to play around with, I mean, technically speaking, I should be playing around with all of them, but the, the one that I especially want to study is the one in bar seven. So just because it's slightly different, it's got the, like the little tail and then up. So based on this ornament table, it should be... Yeah, it should be all same speed. Yeah, how to get those even, it's just a lot of working back and forth and just making sure that you're, you're toggling and not tensing up. Okay, so now we're going to change arrows completely. Uh, I'm just going to change the order here. So I'm going to move that one. Oops, no, 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 no. That one needs to move down. Okay. Uh, I mean, these are all from different eras. Okay, I think I have them in chronological order. They've been just, oh, they're all different composers. But Fugai Mori will be first up. I dropped my pencil. Okay. So Fugai Mori was, I think, the second ED for Inuyasha. Um, 
Uh, I never really did get into the new one. I watched a couple of episodes. Uh, I do love the band, though, that uh, that wrote the piece. So uh, that is Duo's Infinity. So I'm just going to check the battery here. Just make sure it's not red. It's good. Yay! Okay, so my student has been plugging away. She's got page one. She is now moving to page two. So I'm just going to run through the chorus, which is, or pre-chorus and chorus, so, which is page two. Um, I just want to get a really firm sense of the rhythm. Uh, it's interesting, though, because I, I think probably because I've, I've heard it and I've sung it at karaoke, I'm more likely to play it as I hear it, not necessarily what's on the page. But I, I know I'm not alone in that. That's that's everybody. I'm just oops, making everything shake, and just doing a double check to make sure this is all sounding good. Okay. Okay, so pre-chorus is bar thirteen in this arrangement. So with Chisayi. Oh, I'm gonna actually put the overhead because that seems to be. Probably the best view for practicing. things I do like about J-pop, that is not a chord progression we would normally hear in a North American pop song, or even a European pop song. Hey, hang on. I need water. So I'm gonna now that I've got that a bit more firm in muscle memory again, um, I'll just do a full run through. I'm doing it that far off from what I've heard in karaoke, so. Hopefully that'll give my student enough of a sense there of the timing. I'm just going to drill the ending, the coda, because that's where I tend to lose focus because it's it's slightly different. I think this is from the same era. This is from Spirited Away. I don't know. I know like Studio Ghibli films are like considered absolutely fantastic by many. I actually found this it's creepy. <laughs> 
you know, when she does get spirited away, I, that was like the stuff nightmares are made out of. Okay, uh, my student it has made it uh, to the home stretch, but I mean, her opening is good, so I'm just gonna leave that be. I'm gonna concentrate on the back two, the back end. So the da da dee 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 that part, and then the ending. It's a really nice arrangement. I'll um, yeah, drop the links down below for the anime ones. So, okay, pick up into bar thirty. progression you would hear in yeah, North American pop music. <laughs> I don't. I was just in the wrong spot.
Yeah, the ending chords are, are quite different for a lot of these. Uh, okay, I am going to deal with, there's two spots I find that I'm technically not where it should be. So it'll be, yeah, 44. <laughs> To get this even, I'm kind of leaning more on the right. So, um, left butt cheek is off, just hovering off the bench. And I'm doing wrist circles. So yeah, these are actually little little tricks that you learn. So sometimes, you know, especially at university, we were told to like really in, in piano camp, really going in, in into the notes or out or dropping in using your using your body to help. So because um, yeah, if I'm leaning more here, just because of angle, that's going to be stronger. So I'm leaning more this way to make the upper notes a bit stronger because this is such a yeah, weird spot. Okay, cameras on just because that bar 56 and 57 but starting on the pickup that's so actually I'm just going to block the chords a good sense of you know working with your body to help get the sound that you need okay and definitely the next piece that is uh, definitely a necessity okay I rule yeah I think I've sight read to the end I'm sure I have yes I I'm pretty sure okay I'm going to deal with the new stuff is working on pages three and four. Yes, I too should look at the <laughs> bars three and four. Okay, I'm going to start at, I don't know, pick up in 238. Okay, so I think this will, maybe we'll do the two cameras again, so. Five four, 
it's grouped in th three plus two, so I'm gonna go. interesting it's six four but you have to feel the triplets based on how the, the notes are divided oh that is Yes, I'll coda. Where's the? There's that. Okay, so I'll coda. Okay, I'm just gonna start looking at the coda. So we have. It's just subdivided so strangely, bar 49. Okay, let's go to bar 64. So, we could go one trip. For those of you who are not familiar with anime and video game music, you, you can see the, that um, you get exposed to very, very different different harmonies. So it's it's a neat adventure. So I am gonna have to set up a different binder for this, but I just wanted to put this piece on in a binder so that I can deal with the page flip. Okay, so last time I worked on this, I think I got these. Yeah. A little bit off. 
so I'm going to just do a note check. Mainly is the goal for this piece. Okay, so I'm just going to jump in on bar 21 because my student's doing okay with the opening. Uh, yeah, fairly okay with the opening. Okay, so we got So this is done in the style of a you know, standard pop song, four chords, just not, not usually the chords we're used to hearing in a North American pop song, as this is not. Because, <laughs> yeah, that's what, a G sus2. missing the C sharp in bar 22, I suspect. Okay, let's try that again. Too many ledger lines, gotta double check. A C E G that yeah, okay, I was right. Okay, and then we got The notation looks really good.
just try to finish this section. I really should. Okay. Um. It's done in really small print, honestly. Jazzy, very cool. Oh, that is so okay. Hang on. So that's, that was everything I set out to do for today, for today's session. And yeah, um, after I end the broadcast, I'll uh, take a wee bit of a break. We got a couple of other things done. And then uh, I've got a couple of other things that I need to practice. So the song that I'm playing tomorrow, or songs that I'm playing tomorrow uh, at our live stream recital for, for the local nursing home. And uh, oh yeah, my, my, them all, so I'll post that later on Instagram. Um, need to finalize those ornaments, but it's been quite the adventure. And that's, like I said, that's it for today. So whatever your plans are this weekend, uh, have fun. Uh, be safe, because <laughs> it's it's the the rising numbers are pretty scary. So yeah, please be careful. Come back, check the rest out, uh, rest of the channel. There, there's a lot more content and more to come as well. So, uh, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe button, comment. Uh, how does that my favorite YouTubers say? Comment, like, or subscribe, and hit that note and smash the notification button. That's what they say. <laughs> so I'll start saying that too. <laughs> Have a good weekend. See you next time. Oh, and maybe my.